on Swarm Hat. In this video, I want to talk about certain words that I've been trying to eliminate from my vocabulary. And really quickly, it's just a big part of Mystery Babylon. Words and spellcraft. There's a reason that it's called spelling. There's a reason that witches, they write spells and the spells rhyme. And there's a reason that wordplay puns are just a huge part of the media, even though it's just not that funny. And think of how things that are supposed to be serious oftentimes are just filled with puns. Why does the news have ridiculous over-the-top headlines that are full of puns? Well, that's because it's a big part of ba Babylon, Mystery Babylon, these puns. Babble, to babble, Babylon, the connection to the languages being all split up, and there's just a really strong connection between words and spellcraft. And Jesus told us that it's not what goes into our mouth, meaning what we're eating, that defiles us, because people were talking about, I think, kosher laws or something, but it's what comes out of our mouth. So it's what we say that can defile us. And they get us to do that unwillingly a lot of times. We're just programmed to say a lot of these words. So I just want to get into it. Planet is a big one. Just triggers me. If I ever see anybody talk about planet, I just instantly get triggered. There's no such thing as a planet. You can't save the planet because there is no planet. The whole idea of that save the planet thing, they're just trying to reinforce the planet idea with getting people to feel good about themselves. And usually what they're saving is some something in a fursuit or just a stuffed animal. And look at how this is all CGI. It's all cartoons because this is not reality. There's no such thing as a planet. Planet is plane with a T on the end. There's the South Park joke about the person who works at the planet Arium. And they have a rare bone disorder where they can't pronounce the T in planet Arium. It's because planet minus the T is plane, which is where you actually live. So planet, that's an easy one to eliminate from your vocabulary in that I think when you when you really wake up to flat earth, it just starts to piss you off. I don't have a better way to say it than that. I just get so pissed off whenever I see the word planet. It really triggers me. Universe. There's so many of these outer space words. They need people living in this outer space fantasy. And that's why a lot of our language draws on outer space words. It keeps people in the fantasy. And I guess to go back to planet really quick, an example of how they keep people in the fantasy. You might be looking up a chicken salad recipe and you go down and you start reading the reviews. Oh my goodness. And then they'll probably start blaspheming a little bit and then they'll say something. This is the best chicken salad on the planet. And I don't know how I used to react to stuff like that before. I probably just, whatever, that sounds like every other statement that comes out of people's mouths. But now it's just, why would you say that? What about chicken salad has anything to do with a planet? Or, oh yeah, this is the, the greatest whatever on the planet. This is the fastest person on the planet. Just people always talking about planet in the universe. This is the best thing in the universe if people want to be over the top about something and it's through spellcraft like that that they can keep people just locked in this mental prison of outer space nasa fantasy land i think most of the people that say stuff like that like oh this is the best ice cream on the planet i think that they gotta know that it's all a hoax and they are smug about knowing that secret so like each time they do that it's like they get off a little bit Oh, haha, ha, I know it's not a planet, but you think it is. That's the only way that I can think of why these people feel the need to bring up those fake words as much as they do. It makes them feel powerful over people because they have hidden knowledge. Okay, universe. How often do pastors talk about universe, the cosmos? For whatever reason, I can so easily imagine an over-the-top preacher talking about the cosmos all the time. And these are loaded words. They come attached with false notions of flying space balls. 
spinning flying space balls. Wet, wet spinning flying space balls with a little bubble of gas surrounded by a vacuum. Another good one to eliminate from your vocabulary is nuke. This is another word that they've brought into common vernacular. People talk left and right about, I gotta nuke that. Just whenever they're talking about completely destroying something, nuke is going to be a very common word. And it just reinforces the false Hollywood lie. This is just, I mean, these are just CGI, clearly. But even the ones back in the day. I mean, very small explosions exist that have mushroom clouds. So all they're doing is doing camera tricks. They're taking small explosions and they're using Hollywood magic to make it look huge. They're probably... You know those things that it looks like a city is being blown? I mean, it, it could just be a model. They could be using models sometimes in small explosions to make it look way bigger than it is. Okay, this one is really hard to eliminate, and it can make you sound kind of weird. That is just how ingrained this stuff is. Why does everybody call their children kids? A kid is a baby goat. And so it's just really obvious when you know certain things about the Bible, goats versus sheep. Have you ever wondered why the media, they seem obsessed with goat. Uh, a big thing that people talk about is capital G-O-A-T, goat. Baphomet is a goat, and Satan is often portrayed like with goat horns. And So why are people calling their children kids, baby goats? And... It's just this one, I know, it's one of those things where you feel awkward. So many people say kids that if you start saying the word children, you can tell that it feels awkward and that everybody expects you to be saying the word kid, but you're saying children instead. So it's a hard one to break, and it's one where you feel awkward saying it. I guess just another one, like good morning. There's certain, like I still say good morning, maybe it's one I should break, but because mourning, there's a play on words about mourning, like mourning somebody because they died. Good morning. And I agree, there probably is some spellcraft there. But it's just, what else are you supposed to say? It's just so awkward. Good day to you. Uh, and I'm not mocking like, like that's, like we shouldn't be saying good day to you. It's just, there are societal expectations of what words that you should be saying. And this kids, children thing falls under that. If you start just saying children everywhere you'll feel that it feels awkward but i don't care i'm i don't like to call my children baby goats so this is one that i try to stand by but i'll tell you i still say good morning even though some people choose to not say good morning good day is probably a better one <clears throat> wish wishing is just a whole notion that you need to drop we're supposed to pray for things we're supposed to pray to god wishing is just a magic there you're trying to use magic it's the same thing as luck gotta drop wishing out of the vocabulary i think it's interesting here they gave a face to the star and it clearly doesn't look like a space ball then they gave it a face luck is not real there's a big instinct to tell people good luck good luck when there is no such thing as luck Okay, gravity is just a big one, because it gets used in all sorts of situations that have nothing to do with outer space land. And gravity is a good example of where they give a name to something, and that makes it real. And so in this case, gravity, people have this false notion in their mind that gravity is objects falling. That's not true at all. But that's how they teach it to you in school. Oh, the apple falls. Gravity. Gravity. That's not what gravity is saying at all. The What they, what the establishment tries to say that gravity is, is this NASA outer space fantasy stuff of bending space-time. And where's the proof for that? And what about that has to do, what about this has to do with an apple falling? And it's just something that I knew when I was a child. Why does an apple fall out of a tree? Because it's heavier, it's more dense than air. That's just how, if you're more dense than air, you go down. That's buoyancy. It's the same thing as buoyancy. It's all buoyancy. And then people will come out of the woodwork. Well, buoyancy doesn't exist without gravity. Well, that's like a chicken and an egg sort of thing. How are, 
because all they have are equations with g in it. How how can you prove that buoyancy comes from g? How do you know it's not the other way? How do you know that g doesn't come from buoyancy? And I mean that's it. Gravity. They use spellcraft to sell outer space fantasy land. Oh, objects fall. You don't believe in gravity, but look at this. Like just a total typical example. What do you mean you don't believe in gravity? And someone will jump up and down, like jump up in the air and fall down. What do you mean you don't believe in gravity? Look, I'm not floating away. And it's like, that's not even what gravity is. Gravity is this outer space notion of bending space time. Objects falling, that's just buoyancy. <coughs> kind of a, this is just like a one off. I don't know if anyone here does this type of language, but it's always turned me off, and it's kind of a semi-recent thing from his, from what I can tell. People that call each other baby, and they're in a relationship with them. I've never felt comfortable doing stuff like that. Baby, it's probably the most common, hey babe, hey baby. And do people actually think about what they're saying? Do people know what a baby is? A baby is a really, really young child. Why are you calling your significant other that? To me, it's just so creepy and gross and pedo. And it's just an example of people say whatever the media tells them to say, and they don't even think twice about it. People don't even think twice. Why am I calling you baby? You're not a baby. So why do they call them baby? Literally because they saw somebody on TV do it. I'll try to finish up here, just I'll give a list because this list isn't complete. There's so many words out there that have too much baggage attached to them or we're not supposed to use them. Father, the, the Bible tells us that there's only one father and he's all of our fathers. And I mean, except for, except for people who are, their father is the devil, the heavenly father. We're supposed to keep father for him. And so what do they do? They make, they make everybody call people father and I mean yeah I really do think that we should stop using it as a synonym for dad and I mean there you go father's day I wrote a text to my dad happy dad's day master gardener everybody's a master everything they hand out master degrees and this is just another one from the bible the bible tells us that we're not supposed to call each other masters we're not supposed to have these fake earthly hierarchies or you're a master of something it's not supposed to be like that and there's only one master god chimp out shouldn't say chimp out because chimps are just people in fursuits tampa chimp out uh, they got orange here category five category orange So yeah, obviously we, we shouldn't use words like chimp out because chimps are not real. They're people in fursuits. Here's a, another example. Sometimes they use their words to build a web. And tidal locking is a great example. Like look at this great, great stuff right here. <laughs> so they'll take a phenomenon like you never see the other side of the moon. And it's because it's flat. And there is no other side to look at. It's like you're looking through a microscope, or it's like you're looking at through binoculars when you see the moon. It's not actually the moon. You're looking at an image of the moon, and it's flat. It's a disk. It's not a sphere. There is no other side. And there is no other side to be seen. God made these lights. It's like spotlights. And he made them for us to, to look at, just like that. I don't know what's on the other side. We don't know what's on the dark side of the moon. And that's why NASA gives you outer space fantasy land when the the gif of the dark side of the moon, of the other side of the moon going across the earth, that's got to be one of the worst NASA things ever. Anyways, tidal locking, it's the spellcraft because they also try to pretend like the moon causes the earth's tides. And so they build into the moon another word, tidal locking, which has... Like, what about tidal locking? Tidal locking has nothing to do with the tides. But then the moon is caught up. I'll look at more NASA outer space stuff. The cartoons. <laughs> These are just fantastical. If the, if the Earth is so much bigger than the moon, why is it so small in the sky in this photo? 
the Earth should be taking up a huge amount of the moon sky. So yeah, <clears throat> I don't know exactly how the tides work. They're extremely mysterious, but I know that the moon is not. Maybe maybe the moon cycle can somehow be related to the tide cycle somehow, but there is no such thing as gravity. Tidal locking has nothing to do with tides, so I wonder why they chose that word to connect it. We'll kind of wrap it up here. Notice how they get you to memorize all sorts of weird things when you're young. They get you to memorize things and recite them. The Pledge of Allegiance. How culty did that feel when you were young doing that? I don't know if they even do this anymore. It felt like you're in a cult. It feels so weird being forced to talk about pledging allegiance to some sort of flag. What does that even mean? What does that mean to pledge your allegiance to a flag? So the words we say, they have meaning and they have power and it matters what you say. You shouldn't just blindly say something because somebody told you to. How creepy is this? And this is one of those things where the Jehovah's Witness, they get some things right, but then you open up one of those pamphlets and it's NASA outer space stuff all over the place. So the Jehovah's Witness, they won't do this because they know it's evil. I think this might be my last one. There's just so many outer space ones. Oh, my sides are in orbit. My sides are in orbit. You'll see this one all the time on Reddit. When people are super fat, oh, that person has their own gravitational field. Astronomical, when things are really big. It's just incessant. This is why people live in outer space land, because they're constantly being bombarded with outer space land spellcraft. And they'll often cast spells on themselves. Think of that. That's like casting a spell on yourself when, when you start saying the word planet over and over. When you start talking about the universe and the cosmos, you're casting spells on yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video. God bless everyone.